So the first honest thought I have, is that almost all K-pop companies can produce a good MV and make a good song. Sure there are companies like Flow Sisters Company, who gave them an amazing song, but a bad MV with lack of dance training. Sure there are companies like, Like Me's Company who couldn't make a good song and a good MV for Like Me's debut Like Me. But as a girl group stan who listens to boy groups as well, I find new groups every time, and even though a lot of the songs need better vocal editing, or have good vocal editing but just need a little touch up to make it sound more properly mixed in, I still love them. I have loved so many badly vocally edited songs, as much as I loved amazingly vocally edited songs. Like I even ulted Dustin as my underrated male alt group, even when their debut had an average MV, and a low quality song. I love their debut a lot, despite the errors. For me I think every K-pop company, big, medium, small, can make a good song and produce a good MV. The ones who make average MVs, or badly vocally edited songs just need to practice more and learn more about how to make a good MV and song. The only thing that makes these companies bad is not only their lack of money or budget. It's also their lack of skills. Companies can always better themselves as a company, by practicing and learning from the mistakes and errors of their previous song. The only way for companies to improve, is by looking at their faults and errors, and bettering them for their group's next comeback. The second honest thought I have, is that not every big three and hive label group release bops are good songs. I personally have nothing against any of SM, YG, JYP or hive groups. I just find a lot of their songs boring or bad. Like I Can't Stop Me by Twice. I Know I Love You by TXT featuring Siori. Next Level by Espa and a few others that I've already talked about in my previous but recent unpopular K-pop opinions video. I actually like the English version of I Can't Stop Me, but I don't like the Korean version. The song wasn't for me. I thought that doing the retro trend because it's getting trendy was fine, but I just thought it wasn't as good as other retro trends released around or a little bit after. Like Everglow's La G Friends Mago and ICU's Look At Me, are a few of the retro songs I thought were better than Twice's song. I just didn't think it was Twice. As for I Know I Love You featuring Siori, I was hyped. I was excited that one of my alt underrated soloists was being featured. I liked the song the first time I heard it, but I find it not as amazing now. I kinda hate the fact, that Siori only sings in the chorus and doesn't have her own separate lines. I find this song's concept amazing. It makes TXT feel rebellious. Like they're gonna destroy stuff for fun, vandalize and do bad things. It reminds me of those kids that are disobedient and hang out with the wrong crowd, or kids that are young, wild and free. It gives me those vibes. But as for the song, it was done really well, but I don't think it's as amazing as per se crown, can't you see me, run away etc, which I liked more. I just don't like it as much now as I did when I first heard it. Yes, I don't like this song. We people exist. And finally, as for next level. I actually thought I would like the song, because the beat and their rapping and the vocals were amazing. But that abrupt transition from a hard hitter to a chill bop, made the song really bizarre. Like it would have been better if SM released next level as two different versions or two different songs. Maybe they could have made the transition better but no. They instead released it, with a terrible transition and it really ruins the vibe of the song. Like imagine you're jamming to next level dancing like a crazy person, then all of a sudden it changes to a chill bop that you could just relax and listen to. I personally think the rapping, singing, instrumentals and everything were fine. This transition makes me hate the song. I want to love it, but I know that the abrupt transition, will keep annoying me a lot. There are some more songs, but I already talked about them before. In conclusion, not every song the big three, Hive put out is a bop. There's never always a masterpiece released by them. There's gonna be a bump in the road, and that's okay. Not every person is gonna like every song of every group. There's gonna be groups with at least one to two bad songs. 
Not every group has amazing music, and that's the truth. The third honest thought I have, is that about companies debuting groups, and then disbanding them early without a comeback or just disbanding them out of the blue. I personally have loved almost all smaller company girl groups big company girl groups this thought is for boy groups as well but it annoys me that at the time I've discovered a lot of them, they've already disbanded. Some with only one song. Some with two songs. Some with four songs or some with more than four songs. I understand there are companies who face financial issues or have shut down because of COVID or other proper reasons. But what about groups that have disbanded without a proper reason? Like G-Friend who disbanded without a proper reason or like Neon Punch who disbanded because of COVID-related issues, but then the company re-debuted three members into ZUM. Where's the COVID there? How is it that the company disbanded Neon Punch, but debuted ZUM, even when they had issues? And then disbanded ZUM, changed their name from A100 to K-Pop Live, and debuted High L. IDK. Also what about the companies that are smaller, and debut a group only to disband them soon without a comeback or anything? I don't think smaller companies should debut groups, if they cannot financially handle them. Instead smaller companies, should try and get some money and also plan out their whole financial process of the group. Like, how they are going to handle the group and everything about their future, before debuting the group. So they know if they can keep the group running or no. There are plenty of smaller groups who have debuted, and still promote even when the company is small. Like take Maka Maka, who debuted in 2020 and ICU who debuted in 2019. These groups have had their first comeback way longer after their debut, but at least the companies didn't disband them. The companies are handling them really well. Also there are plenty of 2019-2020 debuted groups who are still groups. Even if they have not had a comeback, they're still promoting which is good. So my take is that, companies shouldn't just debut a group, when they know they can't handle it. Instead they should try to get money, for the debut comebacks, training, housing, food, everything etc. So that they can provide for their groups. They should plan ahead and save up for each comeback or song. And shouldn't just disband the group, because they cannot handle them. I believe that every company can manage a group well, if they just handle everything properly and plan ahead everything that needs to be done, so that they can handle their groups well and not let them go too soon. The fourth honest thought I have, is about shitty company management. I'm not only talking about the most well-known shitty companies like Cube, MBK, The Big Three etc. I'm talking about lesser talked about shitty companies as well. Like for example A100 Entertainment Now K-Pop Live. Source Music, MNH Entertainment, Fantiago, Hyunda Entertainment to name a few. I just want a company to be there who treats their idols well. And no, I'm not talking about PN Nation or 10X Entertainment, Wujin's label. These are the only two more well-known companies, that I know off at the moment with good management. I listen to a lot of BGS GGS. I'm not sure which of the companies of the groups that I listen to actually have good management style. I'm not sure. Earlier I named some shitty companies. Let me give you a rundown of why I think they're shitty. First let's start with Source Music. Source Music disbanded GFriend, and only posted about them without giving a proper reason as to why they disbanded. So a day or so after their disbandment, Source Music came to an event for future artists which by the way turned into I believe the members of the project groups under Future Idol which are Ice Cream, Top Girl, Sparkling, Perfume, Lemonade. I don't know which of these groups. I got this information from a comment on a Future Idol Project Group debut song. The next company is A100 Entertainment that is now K-Pop Live, debuted Neon Punch in 2018, then in 2020 disbanded them, because of COVID-related issues, which is fine tbh. But they later went and re-debuted three members into ZUM, which was crazy because they had COVID-related issues. Then they disbanded ZUM and A100 Entertainment, became K-Pop Live and debuted High L. Why debut a new group after disbanding two groups? The company instead of making a new High L channel, deleted all of XUM's YouTube videos, including the 11 million viewed debut of ZUM and made it High L's channel. Like seriously what the fuck is wrong with them? The only thing I like about the company is that they train their idols well, and debut some amazing vocalists. T. That's all that's good about K-pop live.
Fantiago and MNH are terrible because of the fact that Weki Meki and BB Ended haven't gotten comebacks yet, and I fear both groups not lasting long in K-pop. Like Astro get better treatment and budget than Weki Meki. Like compare Oopsie and Dazzle Dazzle's MB to Astro's knock and tell me, I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. Like give these groups a comeback. The last company is Hyunda which managed Baby Boo and if you wanna know why I hate them, watch Midnight Theory's video on them. You'll know why. The final honest thought I have, is about K-pop fans and their reactions to scandals. Like most K-pop fans have this, always believe the victim, mentality, which is okay, but a lot of K-pop scandals especially bullying ones have been proven fake. Like with Woojin's SA scandal people believed the victims. With Mina's bullying accusations, people believed and some still believe Mina. It's sad to see people hate on the idols exposed without doing proper research. Some go as far as to make compilation videos trying to prove their point, when it's just edited in a way to make the idol exposed look worse and the situation exposed look worse than it is. It adds fuel to the fire, and makes the situation worse as these videos get a lot of views. Like the fake 10x entertainment channel, making clout-seeking Woojin videos, making the situation worse, and Taytaypichi, the channel trying to prove Jimin is a bully, by editing clips in such a way to make Jimin seem more worse than she is, and making it clout-seeking. Both these channels uploaded around the time the scandals were hot, and both these channels have high views for these videos, because people love fiction over facts not all people but a few people, and never love to do research, so they hate on the exposed idols without knowing if the situation is true or false. They believe in the victim more than the idol exposed. I think that's fine, but a lot of the scandals in K-pop related to bullying are turning out to be false. For example, Sujin, which I DK anymore if it's true or false. April, which I think is turning out to be false I DK. I'm not sure. Woojin and Mina's which is already false and fake to make the idols look bad and worse, when they didn't do anything. Like I wish people stopped trying to make compilation videos to get views, and start making fun videos for views. Why would these channels stoop so low? It's beyond me. I just wished people stopped making clout-seeking videos, and have the thought that the idols exposed could be innocent, instead of having the, believe the victim, mentality all the time. Yeah, goodbye, 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 goodbye.